Hello, hello, Sharon here. And in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you some formatting tips in Google Docs. Now, to begin with, I just want to clear up a bit of confusion here that um, some people have with regards to Google Docs. And that is a lot of my clients say to me, oh, yeah, I've done it in Google Docs, when really they mean they've done it in Google Drive. Google Docs is, if you think of Microsoft Office, so you've got Google Sheets, which is the equivalent of Microsoft Excel. You've got Google Slides, which is the equivalent of Microsoft PowerPoint, and Google Docs is the equivalent of Microsoft Word. It's a Word document. It's a word processor. Google Drive is basically the storage. So um, Google Drive is where you save your Google Docs and your Google Sheets. It can get a bit confusing, and I'm probably not helping much either. Um, but yeah, this video is about Google Docs, which is the equivalent of Microsoft Word in the Google Suite. And also um, another thing to point out is the fact that this is using a free version of Google. It's not the Google Workspace. It's not the paid version. But if you're using the Google paid workspace, then um, there may be a few elements that look slightly different, or you might have a few different options, a few extra options that you can't see in my tutorial because I'm using the free version. So if you're ready, let's crack on. My first tip is if you have a preferred font, but it's not included on the default list of fonts here, then you can add more fonts to this list. So to do that, click on the font, then click on more fonts here, and a list appears of all the fonts available to you. You can use the drop down lists here to show and sort the types of fonts that you want to see. To add a font, just click on it and it will appear over here on the right hand side. You can see here a list of ones that I've already added. And if I want to remove any, I can just click on the cross here on the, on the right, or I can untick the actual font here and they'll be removed. So once you've added them and you're happy with them, then click OK and they'll now be included on this font list whenever you click on font. If you want even more fonts added to the list, then you'll need to go into extensions and then click add-ons and get add-ons. You'll then need to search in the marketplace for one of, for an extension that allows more fonts. One thing to note is that this list of fonts is now available across your, your Google Suite. So if you open up Sheets or Slides, click into Fonts, and you'll see the extended list that you've just added to your doc. Moving on to tip number two, and it's a quick one to show you how to add bullet points and checkboxes. There is a few different ways of doing this. So to add bullet points, firstly, you can use the keyboard shortcut, Control, Shift and 8 to toggle the bullets on and off. Secondly, you can also access the bullet point menu by clicking on the bulleted list icon up here on the toolbar and then selecting the type of bullet points that you want to use. And the third way is if you're a regular user of Microsoft Word, then you'll probably know that by pressing the asterisk key followed by a space will automatically insert a standard bullet point. Well, it's the same in Google Docs. Press the asterisk key followed by a space and it will automatically convert to a bullet point. This is because it's set as default in your preferences. So if you don't want that to happen, then click into tools, go down to preferences, and make sure that automatically detect lists is unticked next to that and click OK. And now when you press asterisk and space, it will stay as that asterisk and space. Moving on to checkboxes, and it's just as easy to add one to your document. Simply use the keyboard shortcut Control Shift and 9 to toggle the checkbox on and off. You can also click on the checklist icon to the left of the bulleted list here. And again, to do it would do the same thing. Next, we move on to the styles menu. So by default, any text added to the document is in normal text style, which you can see up here to the left of the font. And by default, the normal text is Arial size 11. If you want to change the style of the text in your document, so for example, if you want this normal text to be Georgia size 10, simply highlight part of the text, change the font to Georgia, change the size to 10, then click on normal text and hover over where it says normal text. Don't click on it, hover over it. And you'll see another option appear called update normal text to match. Click on there and any normal text in the document will now be the same as this text, which is Georgia size 10. So you can see this text here is normal, Georgia size 10, and so is this. You can go one step further with this, and that's if you want to set your default normal text to the new style, as in Georgia size 10. To do that, click on the styles menu here, go down to options at the bottom, 
and then click Save as my default styles. This means that any new document you create will now have the styles that you've just saved. So the normal text will now be Georgia size 10 in any new document. You can also do the same with your titles and your headings. Styles are also really useful when it comes to navigating and structuring your document in an organized way. So for example, by including headings and subheadings, it makes it easier to create a contents table if needed later on. To show you what I mean, you may have noticed that I've got an icon over here on the left hand side. This lets me view the outline of the document. Now, if you don't have the icon, click into view and make sure show outline here is has a tick next to it. Now when you click on this outline document on the left hand side you'll see a list of any headings and subheadings in your document. If you click on any of these it will scroll to that particular heading in the document. So it's a real time saver if you're working with a ton of pages in the document and you want to navigate to certain sections really quickly. My next tip is to do with copying and pasting. I'm sure you know to use Control and C to copy and Control and V to paste. But what if you're copying text from other documents or web pages that have different styles and don't match the style of text of the document you're pasting it into? Well, that's where clear formatting comes in and there's a few ways of doing this as well. So firstly, if you've already pasted the text into the document, which you can see here is completely different style, you can highlight the text and use the keyboard shortcut control and backslash and that will remove the formatting. So now when you click on it, you can see here, this is normal text, Georgia size 10, which is what we def what we set as default. And this is heading two, which is the same as these headings here. You'll also find the clear formatting button if you click on format and at the very bottom, clear formatting here. You could also use the paint format by highlighting the text you want to copy the format of. So if I want it all to be normal text like this, then click on the paint format button on the toolbar, which is this paint roller over here on the left hand side, click on there and you'll see that the cursor has now changed to a paint roller. And you just highlight the text that you want to apply the formatting to. Release the button and it will change to match. And finally, if you've not pasted the text yet, once you've pressed Ctrl and C to copy, you can paste the text without the formatting by pressing Ctrl, Shift and V. And you'll see this is now pasted it all as normal text, Georgia size 10. Job done. My next tip is a really cool feature that will save you heaps of time. It's called text substitution and it basically substitutes words from a list with other words. So for example, when you type the letter C in brackets, it automatically becomes the copyright symbol. This is because it's included in the text substitution list. So to access this list, click on tools, go down to preferences and click into the substitutions tab. And here you'll see a list of substitutions that Google has applied. So you can see here, this is the copyright, copyright example that we just used. To add any abbreviation that you like, simply type it in the replace box and then put the correct wording in the with box. So for example, if I want my business name to be typed out long form, I would put the abbreviation SLSAC in replace and then put the full name in the with box like so. You can also use this to add in any words that you know you always spell incorrectly. Add the word that you spell incorrectly here and then put the correct spelling of the word in the with box and it will automatically change the next time you spell it wrong. Any that you add are put to the bottom of the list and if you want to remove it, just click on the cross to the right of it. One final thing is to make sure the automatic substitution here is ticked. And then once you're happy with everything, click OK. Also, anything that you add into the text substitutions will carry across to all of your Google Docs and slides. One thing to note is that depending on the letter case that you type the abbreviated or incorrect word in will affect the capitalization of the correct word. So for example, the SLSAC that I just typed in has changed to SLS Admin Consultant, but I put it all in lowercase. Now, if I type it in capitals, it puts it into capitals. So this leads me nicely onto my next tip, which is how to quickly change capitalization. So firstly, highlight the text you want to change, click on format, click on text, go to capitalization, and then choose from lowercase, uppercase, and title case, and job done. So what was your favorite tip in this video? Let me know. Also, let me know if you want me to cover something else specific in Google Docs or any of the Google Suite apps. Let me know in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.